Hey guys, how's it going? The Electron Man at you again today. But I got a cool one today. I've got a Wawasi Power SWR and Frequency Counter all built in one box, little meter, that we're going to go over. I'm going to hook it up, see if it works, you know, do any repairs that I need to, and I'm going to bring you along on that journey. A uh, little story behind this thing is kind of interesting. Um, I actually picked this up at the last ham fest a few months ago. And uh, basically, there was a, uh, at the end of the ham fest, you know, we're all packing our stuff. And uh, one of the guys at the back door that was managing it come up to me because I was right over there. My table was right over there in that corner. I did that on purpose so I could get in and out easy. But anyway, he told me, man, there's an older gentleman over there just giving away everything on his table. He doesn't want to have to carry it out. And I went over there and he was an older. I mean, he had to be in his mid 80s. And I get it. You know, there's times I've wanted to leave stuff behind. We have a table in the back where you could just pile it all up. And, and he was kind of starting to try to move that stuff over there. So I thought, well, I'll help him out and just get it off the table instead of having to carry it over there. And I think that was kind of what that guy at the back of the door was, you know, hinting at. So anyway. I look, and man, there's some pretty nice stuff there. Um, I picked up this Wawasi meter. I picked up a 2-meter uh, 1070 uh, amplifier, 10 in, 70 out VHF amplifier, uh, a few other little odds and ends. And, uh, I mean, I just snatched them up, got my hands full, and ran over and sent them over to my stuff to uh, pack up. And when I got over there, there was some other guys over there. I said, man, that guy's giving this stuff away. Look what I got. Well, needless to say, I created a rush over there, and uh, that table got real full in a hurry, uh, which I feel kind of bad about because I really would have liked to thank the gentleman. And uh, on top of that, probably throw him a few bucks. I mean, I really kind of feel like, you know, I should have gave something for that. The good news is this is going to a good home. If he's out there, he hopefully he knows that uh, that I appreciate what he gave me, and that uh, it's not gonna. I'm not gonna turn around and make money off it or anything. That's not the plan with this. The plan is, is for me to enjoy it, show it off, and use it. Um, I really like it. It's super clean. It's super unique. Apparently, they're pretty rare, and this is the black cabinet, which even supposedly makes it even more valuable. So I'm gonna cherish it. But anyway, I'll bring you along and. Let's check it out. I just thought you might hear the little backstory Jeez, before guys. And, you know, when I picked it up, it was kind of dirty. It'd probably been sitting on the shelf. I have wiped it off. I have not plugged it in or powered it up yet. So I don't know if it works. But uh, condition-wise, I mean, there's not even any scratches, dents. I mean, it's clean as a whistle. Um, it's a pretty little unit, and I'm kind of excited about it now. After I got to watching some videos, a few of them out there on YouTube about it, uh, this is kind of a pretty uh, rare item. Um, I don't know how many of them they made. I, I mean, it's American made. Um, apparently, it's around 1976 from what I could do on research. And always, well, one of the other items I picked up there was this uh, VHF 70-watt uh, um, amplifier. It'll do a, it's a 1070, and I was reading the specs on it, I, and I'm assuming, you know, it works. I don't know. Who knows? Um but uh, we'll check it out, too. I'll probably do a different video on that. But anyway, I got both these items um, off that table, off that older gentleman. And it, I don't know if he watches YouTube or not, but I sure appreciate him uh, offering this stuff up for free. Like I said, I wish I'd had a chance. I would have uh, definitely gave him a little bit of money. I think uh, I think he had a $40 price tag on this. And honestly, if I'd have saw it and realized what it was, I probably would have paid the $40. But uh, yeah, I got it for free. Um, it, I got lucky on that one, but, uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and, uh, before I power it up, we're going to go ahead and open it up and, and inspect it. I don't want to just plug it in, um, make sure, see what we got inside of it. I don't want to blow it up. It might, you know, might have some caps leaking. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get inside of it and take a look at it. And then I thought I'd bring you along, probably pretty interesting to see how this thing was manufactured and what the inside of it looks like. So let me go ahead and get the cover off. And I'll be back, and we'll take a look at the inside of it. Wow, look at the inside of this, guys. It's as clean as the outside. Kind of interesting, too. It uses these little pins for it. didn't use screws. At first, I thought it was screws, but it has these little standoffs, and it actually uses these little... It actually uses these little pins. I don't know if you can see it. Let me set that pin down. But it's like a little pin that pins in there crazy kind of like newer car electronics or newer car potty parts you know as far as the way they use the plug and then the pin expands it out but i thought it was interesting for 1976 i didn't even know they had anything like that but uh inside looks super clean kind of like the outside i mean well taken care of you can definitely tell it's a 
it's an interesting <laughs> it's definitely i would say a, a small company and they were hand assembled just by by the inspection of it in here um i thought this was the most interesting thing and i don't know if this is factor or not but notice over here you got a you got an alligator clip that actually supports the back of the board and then it's soldered to the back of the case i mean that's that's crazy I, I I don't know if that's factory or not, or if somebody just wanted to support the back of the board better. But I mean, the idea is kind of cool. Uh, solder joint's not holding on it, but uh, I'm just wondering if that wasn't some addition somebody did just to keep it from sagging. I'm not sure what the thought of that was, but anyway, we might try to go ahead and solder that back. The whole inspection the inside, uh, bridge is nice and clean. Doesn't look like you got any. Uh, you always have to worry about somebody running too many watts there and burning the bridge up on it, but the bridge is mint on this guy, both sides of it. Um, the only thing I've noticed on the whole inspection is, is I'm glad I hadn't powered it up yet. You see that right there? That is one leaky cap. And it looks like that's really the only electrolytic cap I see on the whole system. So, go figure. The one electrolytic cap in here um, <laughs> is leaking, and it looks like it's on the uh, it's on the regulated side of the transformer. So yeah, it's just a it's just a filter cap, take out any nastiness. But uh, we'll go ahead and cut it out. Hopefully, uh, I can find out what the uh, what the capacitance was on that capacitor, and we'll replace it with something uh, modern and new. Other than that, I mean, that the only funky thing I see is this crazy alligator clip on the back, and I'm not sure what the thought of that was. I don't know if that's factory. Maybe one of you guys is pretty familiar with these. I would assume it's not, but uh, I don't know. Definitely kind of interesting. Interesting uh, thought. Kind of a cool way to support it but it's not even really working i would have done something different but i don't know we'll we'll play with that see if it maybe if it had a bad connection because the board was laying down i'm just rambling on now let me go ahead and get in here cut that cap out um and then we'll come back and i'll go ahead and power it up and we'll see if if you know if my free item is a working free item or a uh it probably deserved where it needed to be <laughs> on the free table. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got her cleaned up. And as you can see, I've installed a new, it's a thousand uh, microfarad electrolytic. It was actually a 15 volt and I put a, uh, I believe a hundred volt in there. Or uh, no, a 35 volt. So here's the old cap. Yeah, it was a thousand puff, 15 volt, thousand, yeah, here it is, 1,000 puff, 15 volt. This old guy was completely blown out. Um, fortunately, it wasn't the short, but uh, it was like no microfarad. <laughs> so essentially, it just opened up, which is better than a short. But uh, yeah, she's seen better days. That's man, you see a cap like that, uh, it's time to go. That and that uh, that corrosion there, it'll start getting on your boards fortunately this wasn't on a board it was on a metal but still that'll cause a bunch of very corrosive stuff anyway that cap's gone got a nice new updated thousand puff 35 volt in there wired it in as pretty as i could um they had it hot glued down i mean it's kind of funny this whole thing is it's almost the homebrewish you know but uh pretty cool i really like it especially for the price kind of let you get a good view of everything i cleaned up i had, just had some nicer nasty solder joints there i went ahead and tacked that back down to where at least it's tacked down now i don't even know if that's original or just somebody wanting to support the back end it's hard to believe that would be original but who knows like i said it's pretty home brewish but uh anyway i rambled on enough about it get a good look on the inside it's clean i mean very clean no corrosion the SWR bridge looks great. I've plugged it in. Let's go ahead and uh, drum roll it and see if it'll uh, come on. 
Okay, is it gonna? Is it actually gonna have frequency? I'm sure the SWR probably works, but hey, look at that, and it's zeroed out. It's got a kilohertz too. Fired right up. Well, let's get a radio hooked up to it and do some uh, checking on it. See how close it is and how accurate it is. Let me. Uh, I already brought a radio in here. I need to get it wired up in here and let's take a look at it. See uh see what we got. Okay, just got a spare radio I had sitting around. Put it on channel 19. Uh, I believe this is about a 4 to 10 swinging radio. So, let's see uh, what we got over here. First, does the frequency counter work? Yes, it does. Pretty dang accurate, too. It's hearing my modulation. Wow. 27184. That's probably pretty accurate. Hello, audio. Yeah. Appears the meter's working too. Does the kilohertz work? It sure does. And let's see. Does the uh, SWR or the power meter work? About 4 watts. 10 watts. Hello. Hello, audio. 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 That's just about exactly. Wow. Uh, I wonder if the, the uh, SWR works. Switch on this guy, from what I figured out, you switch it over here. By the way, I cleaned all the switches on it when I was in there. Uh, let's see here. We want forward. Try to do this with one hand. It's not going to be easy. There we go. And then reflect it. It should be zero, basically. Yeah, which it is. I'm in a dummy load. SWR meter works. Power meter works. I don't have it. Something I can put 2,000 watts into it, but wow hello audio 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 now let's compare it to uh my other meter over here frequency let me turn the mic gain down so i'm not fluctuating it 271847 Eight. Wow. I mean, it's spot on. It's bouncing the eight. Twenty-seven one eight four. That's on my HP bench calibrated one. It's spot on. I haven't touched the thing, and it is spot on. Wow. What a find. What a find. What else I can say, guys? I didn't. All I had to do is put one cap in it. And I cleaned up a little bit of solder work in it. And, uh, I mean, look at this. The case is. This case is nice. I mean, there's, there's no corrosion, nothing. Whoever had this really took care of it. Well, I, I hope that old man's out there and he knows that uh, this is going to be a, a cherished item. It's not. I'm not going to just, because I got it for free, turn around and flip it. I'm actually going to put this up on my bench and replace my PDCs up there. It is more accurate than my PDCs, and it's got a built-in frequency counter, which kind of just to check a radio. This is a great little bench uh, meter here. Somebody comes in, I just need to check it, make sure it's on frequency, check the power. It's as accurate as you're going to get on this scale of meter you know unless you go to a bird i mean i'm comparing it to my pdc up there and uh actually this is, seems to be more accurate than my pdc so go figure they make good things back 1976 it's kind of interesting on the inside i still it's almost kind of home brewish but uh total respect other than a few solder joints and this weird alligator clip which i still haven't figured out i thought about 
printing a 3D uh, standoff and putting a bolt on the back. But heck, man, I mean, leave it original. It ain't hurting nothing and it's working. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. I, I don't know. I probably rambled on too much. You got to appreciate this stuff, though. You really do. Trying to just give you some good views of it. It's got two 200 watt 2000 scale SWR forward end reflected kilohertz megahertz and all I have is one leaky cap in it after what is it 76 that thing's, this thing's 50 years old or close to it 49 years old still kicking amazing simple construction too of course you know keeping it simple might be why it's lasted so long small transformer a regulator one cap i'm guessing it probably converting it over to five volts dc i guess i could hook my meter up but that's what my guess would be all the logic in there that's your oscillating circuit there's your trimmers which I don't know, maybe that one's been replaced, possibly. Kind of looks like somebody might have been in here one time and, and then restored it, and I don't know, maybe they they have two blue ones and a black one, but uh, those those solders look a little fresher than those, so they might have placed that right there. But I mean, nothing's burned out, no bridge damage, and then a few dirty solder joints. Well, let me get it all back together and let's take a final look at it. There you go, guys. There's the uh, Wawasi, 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 Wawasi. I guess it's a Wawasi, Wawasi. Okay, guys, the, there's the Wawasi uh, Electronics Incorporated and Company um, Black Cat SWR Frequency Counter, all in one package, man. This thing's cool. I mean, super cool. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. I love the way that meter swings. Hello, audio. 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 <whistles> Hello, audio. That's so cool. And look at that. 271848. 27. I have to turn the mic game down again, Tom. There you go. 27. Let me get it. 27, 1, 8, 4, 8. Four digits deep. 27, 1, 8, 4, 8. 27, 1, 8, 4, 8. Wow. They made good things back in the 70s, right? And there she is. I'll put back together. I'll still get me those. I wonder if that's normal to have those little pin locks. That's so crazy. It works, so. There's the back. Nothing special there. Just an in and out. Fuse block. Extra ground wire there. Okay, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, really not a big repair project. I think that's more just a journey back to the mid-70s. And, uh pretty cool little uh, SWR uh, frequency counter meter I tell you um, wow the price is right too accurate I love the frequency counter in it it's, it's just cool it's a good conversation piece anyway guys I have rambled way too much have a great day out there if you haven't subscribed go ahead and give it a subscribe um, this down there you know hit the little subscribe button and as always give me a thumbs up that really helps the algorithm out there on YouTube Anyway, guys, have a great day. This is Electron Man 73s.